Good morning, Cerise Randy Murphy here. Just coming to you to say hello. It's been a month, almost a month, since the release of The Wolf Queen, and I want to say thank you to everyone who made it such a wonderful release. Um, all the people who came to my booth at New York Comic Con, all the people who have read the book, um, and emailed me or messaged me to tell me that they enjoyed it. I appreciate it so much. So if you haven't had a chance to read it, it's out. You can get it everywhere, Amazon, Barnes Noble, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you have read it and you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a review because it lets other people know that this is a book worth reading. So I wanted to say thank you so much because it's been wonderful hearing your feedback. But I want to make this video because I have a secret. So since the release, I've been doing pretty much nothing but reading. But even before the release, when I'm writing, I usually don't read in the genre that I'm writing in. And I'll just be intensely writing or editing and I miss reading. I love reading so much. And so what I started doing, I think maybe midsummer, to get my reading fix in and to sort of decompress from all the craziness that's that was going on just in my life. My kids were home for the whole summer and it was mommy camp. And also every time you turn on the news, it's something bad or worse. And I was just feeling like I needed an outlet. And so what I started doing is reading romance novels. Now, I am not typically a romance reader. I think my first introduction was like the Harlequin novels, like back in the 80s and early 90s with like men with like their chest out on the cover and all these swollen throbbing members and I was just like Ugh. it was not okay but I have some really good friends who are romance writers and I started getting recommendations from them because I felt like I wanted to read but I didn't want to have to like I didn't want to read something where I really had to have like an existential conversation with myself. So no sci-fi, no, you know, obviously I was writing a fantasy, so I couldn't read fantasy. I wanted something that was a light story that I knew was going to turn out really well in the end. And while it was a, a gripping, engaging story, it wasn't like super heavy. So I started getting these recommendations for romance novels and I just have loved it so much. My ritual is usually like on a Friday night, I will download something onto my Kindle app and um, just start reading it. And I will stay up all night. And usually I'll be finished by like four in the morning because I read, I mean, I, I can just read a book in a day if it's not like an existential crisis kind of book. I can, or something really deep where you have mystery, where you have to figure things out. I can really like go through a book in a day. And it felt like such a treat. It was an escape. It was a great story. Everybody ended up alive and happy at the end. And um, it just became this huge stress reliever for me. So what I wanted to do with this video is take some time to recommend to you and share with you some of the great books that I've been reading if you want to try my de-stress tactic. So I don't have a Kindle because I refuse because I love books, but it's easy when you're up late at night and you're trying not to wake everybody else. Just read on your phone. So one of the books that I've been reading, I don't know if you can see here, is Beverly Jenkins. Beverly Jenkins writes historical fiction, um, African-American characters like in the Wild West and in the frontier and all this really, really amazing stuff and amazing history. But it's all sort of romance. Um, and so I, I read Topaz. I read Breathless. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, yeah, see, there's no no uh, no shirt on, dude. Um, really, really great stuff. Let's see, my favorite one. Uh, let's see. Ooh, I can get this. Is Indigo. I just finished it. It's so good. That's probably my favorite. Um, I read The Kiss Quotient. You see that right there? Uh, by Helen Hong, I think I said is how you say her name. It's about a young woman who is on the spectrum of autism, and she has a really hard time making relationships and connections. And she decides to hire a male escort to teach her how to have better sex and to relate to the opposite sex. It's sort of like a reverse pretty woman, and it's really, really sweet and good. And 
I loved it. So I read that. Let's see. Um, uh, Wraith by Rebecca Witherspoon, I think. Uh, so, yeah, I can't. Uh oh, I can't see. Um, yeah, anyway, it was awesome. It's about this woman who hires um, a male nanny and they end up falling in love and there's sort of drama because she's divorced and the the ex-husband doesn't quite want to let her go. And so it's drama, but it's not like crazy drama. There's nothing to, like you really have to be nail biting and think about it. It's going to stress you out. It's like enjoyable drama and it all works out well in the end. And he's very, very cute. You see him there. He's got his red hair and his big beard. And that's kind of cool. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, how not to let go. Um, is I think this is the second. Is it, oh, how not to fall and how not to get let go. It's a series. You can see these two right here. This was reckon to, recommended to be by my, a friend of mine, Ines uh, Johnson, who writes romance and paranormal romance and suspense and all kinds of great stuff. Um, and she, this writer whose name is hold on, let me see, Emily Foster. This is an old book series, but it was written um, in response to like Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, and just feeling like this, she read it, the author read it, and she felt like I can definitely, you know, go deeper and, and do a better job here. And she does a great job with these two books about uh, a professor and his student who ends up not being his student um, and how they fall in love and sort of negotiate her innocence and his jadedness. And it's really, really good. I enjoyed it. I've also been reading Alyssa uh, Cole's Reluctant Royal series, and you can see here uh, Duke by default. There, there, there you go. If that was yummy. Um, it takes place, oh, I want to say in Scotland. Maybe it's Ireland. I read it a couple days ago. I mean, a couple weeks ago, so I'm, I'm not completely clear. But it is really yummy and just lighthearted and lovely. Um, the other book that I read, The Hating, The Hating Game. And this is recommended to me. Ooh, you can't really see that that well. Okay, maybe that's better. Yeah. Um, by This is recommended to me by Elle Penelope, who writes uh, fantasy. Uh, her book, uh, Song of Blood and Stone, has been released, and you should go check it out. But anyway, she recommended The Hating Game to me by Sally Thorne. And it was so much fun. It's about these co-workers who they think they can't stand each other, but really they're attracted to each other. And it's just really well written and sweet and and just I mean there's some yummy you know sex scenes in there too but like just just fun just fun I had a good time reading it and then finally I'm going to recommend First Night that's the one in the middle man with no shirt on uh oh a child is coming in mommy's recording a video please don't come in right now thank you and um it is just really a lot of fun and it's a retelling of an Arthurian, le Arthurian? Yes. legend by my friend uh, N.S. Johnson. And it's really, really good. And just, again, lots of fun. If you enjoy fantasy and um, Arthurian legends, you're going to enjoy this because uh, everybody, it's sort of a modern retelling. So everybody's like really sort of spicy and there's great dialogue and, and, and sassy and independent women and all kinds of great stuff. So that is, has been sort of my tour of romance um, of late. And that's how, kind of how I got through reading um, while writing, which um, can, be, can be really challenging because I've got to write and I've got to finish this story, but I want to read. And so that's what I did. Now that I'm done with Wolf Queen book one, I have now, I now have the brain space to like figure stuff out and mystery and suspense. And so I'm going to try to tell you about some of the books that I'm, I just finished reading. Third Sight Into Darkness by Lynn Emery was a wonderful book. This is the fifth book in the LaShawn Roussel series. So yummy. And so again, she writes, I've, I've reviewed her books before. She's, she's based in Louisiana that her stories are based in Louisiana. Just amazing history sense of, of, um, atmosphere and suspense. That's all like grounded in real Louisiana lore. And this is no different is a fantastic book about a young woman and her family who get caught in trying to help these tourists 
find a one of their relatives that got lost in a Louisiana swamp looking for treasure. Really, really great book. I devoured it. Let's see. This is a collection of short stories called A Thousand Beginnings and Endings. I happen to go to a small convention called Capclave that's uh, around my area in the Baltimore area. And um, I met a, an author by the name of Alyssa Wong, and I read her short story out of here, and it was amazing. Um, it's all sort of stories based in Asian mythology and legend. And it's a really, really great collection of books, I mean, of stories. Um, I also read Naomi Novak's uh, Spinning Silver. Uh, it's a fantasy about a young woman who uh, is a money collector and ends up uh, incurring the interest and the wrath of an ice god and who wants her to change all their silver into gold. And that's all I can say, but it was, it was definitely a really interesting and, uh, yeah, fascinating read. So I enjoyed that. Let's see. Um, I have also been reading uh, Harry Potter, which I never read before. Um, I wanted to wait until I read it with my kids, and we have been devouring it, mostly on Audible, which I highly recommend. Um, but we just finished the fourth book, Goblet of Fire, and I finished it before the kids did because I could not wait. We have the books and the audiobook series, so I am starting this. Yes, I'm start, starting Order of the Phoenix, which is kind of funny because whenever I type in Order of the Sears on um, on Amazon, by the time I get to Order of the Order of the Phoenix, always comes up. So I'm finally getting to read the book that always preempts my book. <laughs> but um, I'm really excited about it. The kids don't know that I have started this. But yeah, I'm really excited. I can't wait for them. This is I, I've, it's just it literally was one of the joys of our summer reading Harry Potter. So 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 much fun. Okay. I'm going to be reading The Road to Nia Zone uh, by Anna Tambor. I cannot wait to read this. I'm expecting it to be completely off the wall and crazy because it's published by Obsidian Sky, which uh, is Zigzag Claiborne's uh, publishing company. He wrote The Brothers Jetstream, and if you've never read that, you should. But I will tell you, it is like a crazy ride. He describes it as sort of Buckaroo Banzai inspired. I would say Buckaroo Banzai like on acid. That's kind of how it is. So I'm expecting lots of weird things from this book, but I dig weird. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, the Black God's Drum. It's short as you can see it. So I'm looking forward to devouring this like in an afternoon. I'm so excited. Um, it's a fantasy novel and I, I, I just love the cover and I was like, I'm getting that. Um, and then the last thing that I, oh, oh, oh. I have a whole pile of books, so I, I always, this I've been meaning to read for a while. Um, there is No Lovely End by Patty Templeton. I was just at the World Fantasy Con and I met her and I didn't have the book for her to sign, but it's okay. I'm reading this. So that is what's on my list. This video is almost over 13 minutes long. Thank you so much for listening. This is what I've been reading. If you have great recommendations for stuff that you have been reading, please respond with a comment below because I would love to hear it. I am working on book two of The Wolf Queen. I'm outlining and plotting and all kinds of great stuff. I've already got the prologue written in my head for book two. So I've got just a couple weeks more before I have to buckle down and start writing, which means no more fantasy. So I would love to hear your recommendations for stuff that you're reading. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope that you have a great time. Vote if you haven't already. It's so important. This is our government. We are the people. And if we want to see what we want to see in our world, we have to create it and in a democracy. How you do that is voting. So I hope that you get out there November 6th. I've already voted, so I'm going to be reading. <laughs> um, but I hope that you stay well and happy reading, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.